Good day, chefs. Week five coming at you. And today we have a great classic dish from Naples, Italy called aglio e olio, which means garlic and oil cooked together. So you could put spaghetti in front of that. So spaghetti, aglio e olio. Today we're doing bucatini, aglio e olio, uh, a la chef, whatever your name is. Okay, so let's get started. We have a great day. Chester's napping, it's rainy out. So a uh, great day for some comfort food and some fun restaurant style cooking because we'll plate it up fun and uh, save you a little cheese and some basil at the end and we'll garnish it nice. And uh, I'll take a picture and send it over in the email so you can see what mine looks like uh, adding the finishing touches and uh, we'll enjoy. Ingredients you'll be using today. Cherry tomatoes, bucatini, two shallots, chili flakes, pecorino romano cheese, garlic, olive oil, basil leaves, pepper, have plenty of salt, plus extra to salty water, and extra olive oil. Our tools for today, typical paring knife, chef's knife, bread knife that's going to cut our tomatoes. I like a slotted spoon as well as a mesh strainer to get the garlic out of the water. Grate <clears throat> a grater. This is a cheese grater. Or you can grate anything. Or a microplane grater. This one really gets a nice shred. I'll be using this one today. Get your big pot. Fill it with hot water. Take your salt. The palm of your hand. Pour some salt just to fill the bottom of your hand. Okay, just like that. I'll pull my hand out of the way here so you can see. But just enough there, okay? And put that in there. Probably a little bit more there because I have a lot of water in. You want the water to taste as salty as the ocean. And get it up and boiling while we do our prep. So take your large knife, chef's knife, and uh, your garlic that's peeled, and just slice it. Not too thin, not too thick. I'll show you on the blade here. Uh, there you go, all right. So right there is our wheelhouse. That's perfect, okay. They're all about the same. It's okay if some of them get thin or thick. Watch the stickiness of the garlic on your knife. Be careful pushing here. All right, our shallots. <clears throat> As you can see, I diced one already. Oh, whoops, let me get you back in focus here. All right, our shallots. As you as you can see, I got I have one diced right there, and we're going to be doing our first work with a paring knife. So a shallot, let's call it a baby onion, all right? It's a cross between garlic and onion. Okay, so you cut the root off. You can leave, you know, as we do with the onion, the root kind of intact, flower end off, and you're gonna cut it right in half, peel it, Sometimes when you peel it towards the flower end, it'll be a little dark purple. It may be a little papery or might be a little soft. You can just cut that away. I'll see if I could find some here. I should be so lucky to find a flaw in my food. Take your board. Get all that paper away. You don't want that in your food. Okay. Yeah, so that little piece there, like he's kind of lightly push my knife down not all the way through I could peel that piece back and that's just kind of like you know not not great let's say that take your shallot take your fingers put them together hey how you doing okay just like this and you're gonna put them right on top of that shallot okay like that 
you're going to take your knife and you're going to go in sideways. One and two. Okay? If you can get three, go for three. But start off slow. I'm going to go for three. But... Walk before you run. And then you're going to turn it aside and then just give it a push. Paring knife, I like to put my finger on top here. You know, chef's knife you hold like this. Paring knife, it's a little more pressure. Um, it's a little easier. It's a sharp knife because you don't use it as often. I hope they're sharp. And I uh, make four or five rows that way. Turn it back and then just dice it however big you'd like it. Five or six times is good. I like to try and make them as uh, half the size of my fingernail. That's a good rule of uh, thumb to look at it and uh, do half the size of it. Okay. So again, let's not mix our ingredients. Again here, I'm going to take the shallot. Hey, how you doing? I'm going to put one and let's do two there. So we do two together. I'm not cutting all the way this way. As you know, just like the onion, finger down, pushing through, pushing through. And you can see I'm, I'm dragging the knife back. Okay. Again. And then you could take the, uh, the butt of it, I like to call, and push it down and get that little guy. And then go over here and nip that row and here and then kind of just using most of the vegetable and make sure it's all separate and they look nice. So that's our prep for our aromatics. And now let's look at the tomatoes. Get your bread knife. And now you're going to get two lids. If you have the container lids, these are the best things to use. If not, use two small plates, maybe where you would put teacups in or um, just your tiny smallest plates that you could use. Plastic small plates are great, no paper plates. Okay, so you're going to put your tomatoes in here. This is a fantastic trick. Um, I love showing people. I don't know if anyone knows it, but so it cuts down time in cooking and prepping, right? Or prepping, I should say. So I'm just going to take some of my medley tomatoes here. I'm going to try and fit 15 in, in my lid. I'm just going to pick, go down the row here. So, there we go. If I could just get them all in there. Eh, I've got to do probably another one. The other lid on top, okay? So you have that side there, okay? That, let's get a grip here. Okay, here, you have it just in there. Take your bread knife, your palm up, okay? And just cut right through there. You might wanna bend over and put your head at that level where the knife is and just look as you cut to make sure that you're doing it safely and just go back and forth cutting your tomatoes and it mostly cuts them in half but if you need to do it again you can rotate them and cut them again on the bottom half of it because they are sometimes bigger tomatoes because I really don't care how they come out here but really the trick is to get them cut in half but they're all different sizes here but I like that so now I have nice segments of tomatoes and let me get a bowl real quick for these tomatoes and it's clean and I save all the juice doing it this way okay that's beautiful let's do a couple more I'm gonna try to do some same size ones so we can just get them cut in half all right again tomatoes lid go right in I put my finger on the knife again here just so I could guide the pressure. And I do a saw back and forth. 
and I have my tomatoes cut in half. Very nicely done. Let me put them aside. So that's your veggie prep for today. Next, grate your cheese. Take your microplane, take your cheese, hold, and you're gonna move. Okay, not this going this way, no. Here, here. I don't mind the rind, which is here, going in. Some people really go crazy for that flavor and some people really think it's not pleasant at all. And I really just don't taste it, but because it's going in all together here. And that's good for a serving. Garlic is about done, so I upgraded to a bigger strainer here. And what I'm going to do to get it all out is I'm going to go counterclockwise a couple turns to get the garlic off the bottom and moving. Wait a second, and then I'm going to scoop against it and grab all the garlic I can. Okay, shake it over the pot a couple times to get all the water out. You could do the little bump on the end of your pan, the pot here and then take your garlic and just simply dump it, tapping right onto your pad. Again, you can just go around. I like to keep the strainer right here and then go back, collecting all my garlic. Landing pad. Again, so do this so you're all finished, get it in on the pad, pat it dry, and we're gonna throw it in the oil. Take your garlic, and I like to just kinda kick it back so I can get a mound of it together, and go from the shorter end of the pan here, try and get another mound together, right till I can get it right in that oil. Okay. And use a spoon or if it's not hot yet, just kind of stir it around or shake it so all the oil is covering the garlic and it is submerged completely. You want them to all cook at the same exact rate, at the same exact time. And I missed over here. I'm going to cook that till it's nice and light brown in hue. Get your bucatini cooked off. Take it like a fist here and just shake back and forth. Get it all in there. Take your wooden spoon or if you have a pasta spoon, stir it around. And start your timer for a minute and a half less than what the box calls for. So mine was 11. So I'm cooking it for nine and a half minutes. The garlic, as you can see, is bubbling, and that's how you want it to cook. Just bubbling right there. Just bubbling. Nice and nice. Pasta finished cooking. Take your original measuring cup and just scoop out some water before you strain your pasta out. I like to take a cup. It's always good to have more, unless... Take your pot, go strain your pasta. So I strain my pasta, I put it back in the pot, and I'll just take a dash of oil and just coat the pasta real quick. Wooden spoon. And you can set this aside somewhere. Okay, I got it fully coated there. Looks good. Garlic's toasting up nicely. It's nice and brown. I think I'm gonna cut the heat there. My residual on my burner, since it's electric, will finish it off nicely, but that's just where you want it. Okay, now I'm gonna spoon some of my beautiful garlic oil into the pan and get my shallots cooking. Now this is where we feel like we're 
back in a restaurant cooking. Because we have to put everything together and plate it. And that's fun. Coat your pan. Make sure your pan's nice and hot. And get your shallots in. Now our oil will have a little salt in it from the garlic boiling in the salted water, but we should still add seasoning. So just a small pinch of salt there. Just, just a small pinch. And I will get back to my wooden spoon because metal on metal is never fun. And cook that out for a couple minutes. Shallots look good, nice and clear, not brown. Let's add our tomatoes right in there. More salt. A little bit of a heavier pinch here. Tomatoes have a lot of juice in them. Get your heat going medium high, a little high now. We're gonna start cooking fast and get our dish together. Cook it up nice. Let's get our chili flakes and garlic in. I use about a tablespoon of garlic. Stir it in for a hot minute. You're gonna get your pasta and have your water on hand. And we're gonna start cooking. Pasta goes in. You can do half at a time, but I'm doing the whole thing. What are you doing? I want to give it one little coat before I add the water here. Wooden spoon's great. You can use a fork here to kind of twist it. Or, again, I don't like the metal, but kind of just throw it on top of each other here. All right. That's coming together. By the time I keep stirring it with the water, it'll go. So let's see how much I'm going to use here. Oh wow, three quarters of a cup to coat the bottom of my pan. That was about a three quarter cup pour. And now I'm gonna let it cook and season it with some salt and pepper. Just one dash, a small dash of salt, pepper. Get your basil leaves. Good. And start ripping your basil, leaf, basil leaves into the pan here. I like to just pull them apart. Nothing fancy. Who cares if big pieces fall in there? It's going to cook. This is the rustic part of our Italian cooking, which is great. No stems, please. As a couple fall in. Should smell great. Start tossing now. It's gonna get a little messy. It's gonna get a little, little messy there. You can also do two hands on it and toss it. It's in it's in your arms. It's not in your wrists. It's in your arms here. Okay? So you know it's hard to do there. You know Pe people think it's that. No, it's it's your arm moving. Never this. 
Never this. Okay. Quick tip there. I'm using both hands because it's quite sloppy, and using both hands you have way more control. And it's looking really nice. You're gonna taste it, take a piece of pasta out. See if it needs salt and seasoning. Definitely does. Remember, you're gonna put cheese in, so don't put too much salt because cheese is gonna add to it. And that's looking beautiful. That is our dish right there. See, just enough, just enough juice there to coat it. So now, toss some cheese on it, turn off your fire. Okay, to the side for a second as that cools down. I'll take my cheese, spread it. Okay, Let's throw it in there. Everything should be very aromatic and smelling great. You will take one last toss. Now take your fork and plate. Fork and plate, take your fork, kind of go from the side, get the bucatini, twirl or twist ever so nicely, pick it back up, put it in your plate. It should go off nicely. Bucatini's thick, you can do it again, twirl. Put it on your plate. One more, and then you can take your spoon and come back and get some juice. Again, this is enough for just about two people, I believe. Come back, get some tomatoes, get some juice. Get it right on there. We have some extra cheese here. Take that out. A little cheese. Take your basil leaf. And there's your dish. I'm going to wipe the sides and take a picture. And there you are. Enjoy. Well, that wraps up week five. I hope you had a great day cooking. I hope you had fun kind of doing something that we do in the restaurants, tossing the pan, getting uh, your plating set, and putting all your food together and making it taste wonderful, and enjoying some fun with your family in the kitchen. So from me and Chester, until week six, we'll see you next time. And I can't wait to cook another meal with you guys. Have a great week.